a NASA astronaut who was forced to retire years ago to save his family farm, has never given up his ambition of space flight. He plans to construct his own rocket, despite government threats. The movie starts out with a man named Charles, riding his horse while wearing a space suit. He then returns to his home, where his wife Audrey has cooked pancakes, but their children Sunshine and Stanley refuse to eat them because they claim they are shaped like Jupiter. Charles enters the space-themed room where his old photographs are displayed, before going to wake up his son Shepard. After his father passed away, Charles, a former fighter pilot for the United States Air Force and astronaut candidate, was forced to leave so that he could take over the family ranch in Texas. He calls his son, who has been playing with a machine, to attention. Shepard drops off his wife at work, where her co-workers make jokes about whether or not her husband would be able to launch the rocket, but Audrey ignores them. Charles has created a functional copy of the famous Mercury Atlas rocket and spaceship on his farm, proving that he has not given up on his desire to get to space. His entire family is in amazement at this mission. Charles goes to a guy to get 10,000 pounds of fuel to launch his rocket, but like everyone else in town, he considers it foolish and a waste of money. Following this, Charles goes to the bank to apply for a loan. He is turned down because his mortgage hasn't been paid yet. The bank employee then counsels Charles to forget the rocket and pay off his previous loans instead. At home, the family is full of dreams and values all the opportunities in the world. The next day, Audrey's father Hal pays them a visit and compliments Charles on his work. The mailman delivers a statement, stating that he has days to pay or his house will be taken. Charles throws it into the loan officer, attracting the attention of a sheriff. They go to court, and the judge asks Charles to apologize to the bank before referring him to a psychiatric evaluation. Later, Charles sees the school nurse, and she advises him to quit thinking such impossible things, all the while flirting with him. She believes that this is the result of Charles not being loved as a child and pushes him to grow up. She also recommends that he teach at the school, but Charles is uninterested. He interrupts his children's classes, where the instructor says she is teaching them history, but Charles says he is going to teach them how to make history and takes them all home. He informs them that they are now a part of the farmer's space program and will be working with him for a month, but if they do not want to, they should tell him right away. Realizing that they do not have to attend school, the kids eagerly agree. Charles says that they will regularly study the school material to avoid being left behind. Audrey arrives and objects to the proposal, but Charles convinces her that it is just for four weeks and that the kids would return to school after that. Soon after, several FBI agents arrived and were surprised to find the rocket. They were informed that Charles had requested a large amount of fuel. His entire farm was to be inspected, but they suspect that he is building a warhead. He will not be flying the rocket until their investigation is completed. Following this, Charles meets with his lawyer friend Kevin and tells him that he already submitted his entire plan to the FAA, but they can't do anything now that everything is almost finished. Kevin says that they didn't take him seriously back then, and they can do whatever they want if they think Charles is a threat. He promises to call a friend who might be able to help Charles. The next day, the media shows up there and begins publicizing Charles's story around the nation. As Charles receives more media attention, the FBI agents talk about how they will look like fools, whether Charles launches the rocket or not. Charles gets a call from Kevin, who has dispatched a journalist buddy to shield him from the FBI investigation. Charles's Air Force friend Doug comes over shortly after, and the two of them enjoy dinner with the family, cracking jokes about Naaman. Doug remarks that the government will never allow a citizen to go to space before a young child shows him the rocket. Doug tells Charles to put an end to this foolishness. Charles rejects Doug's offer, becoming upset. He thought Doug would understand. The very next day, Doug joins Charles and Kevin at a meeting with government representatives from various departments to discuss getting approval for their mission. During the discussion, the representatives argue that no civilian should be allowed to build such a large rocket that could be used as a weapon or travel to space, while Doug claims that Charles is mentally ill and delusional. Charles claims that he was told to be everything he wanted to be. Unlike him, people stop believing in possibilities at some point. He also thinks that his son is fully capable of leading the mission to launch his father into space. While Charles is in the lavatory, one of the officials threatens him that if he launches the rocket, the U.S. Army would shoot him down. Kevin tells Charles that they lack the authority to stop him, which is why they are attempting to convince him to give up. Meanwhile, Audrey receives a visit from a child protection service officer who urges her to take charge of her family, informing her that the children have been indoctrinated. Audrey then goes to the grocery shop, where she is followed by everyone. Her payment is rejected, forcing her to leave. At dinner, she confronts Charles about the approaching deadline for losing their home, which he had been trying to avoid. She questions how he could imagine leaving them without anything while dreaming of space travel. Charles then comes to a box and furiously empties it of all of his food and supplies. While their parents argue, Shepard takes his sisters to their rooms. Audrey criticizes Charles for being so arrogant. After everyone has left for church in the evening, Charles declares that he must act on what he believes in, and Audrey admits that she no longer believes in him. 
Hal and Charles were watching a sports car race. They made a remark about how those cars receive large advertisements, simply for being driven in circles. This gives Charles an idea, and he approaches several businesses to try to persuade them to place advertisements on his rocket. However, each of them declines, believing that if the mission fails and he gets hurt, it would cause them great loss and guilt. When they return home, they discover that Hal has passed away. After being turned down for the hydrogen fuel, Charles decides to utilize a different fuel. Kevin then shows up with new information. It would take days to reach a decision, and they are merely delaying the bank's deadline, since the fine will be removed in a week. Charles tells Audrey how his father was going to lose the ranch, but a gunshot was fired to end his life, just as he was about to reach his dream. The authorities were attempting to take it away from him. When Charles's letter arrives the next morning, Audrey reads it, and the windows are shattered by a powerful explosion. She urges him to pledge that he won't do something foolish. She calls her son, and the two of them watch the rocket launch from the earth. But after just a few feet of vertical lift, the rocket falls over and horizontally explodes out of the bond, almost hurting the media there. Charlie is taken to the hospital. They discover that, despite suffering serious wounds and brain damage, he lived and entered a coma. While he spends months rehabilitating in the hospital, Shepard visits and begs his father to return, so that they may rebuild their relationship once again. The officials claim that this failure is the reason why citizens should leave these types of things to qualified authorities, since it endangers not only them, but everyone around them. The media soon becomes silent. Charles recovers, but he also experiences severe sadness and reports that his once joyous dinners have since stopped. When Audrey brings the money to the bank, the official remarks how Charles led everyone to believe he would travel into space, but they all seem foolish. Hal had left Audrey some money in his will, which Kevin believes would help them pay their loans. After changing her mind, she goes back to Charles to offer him some encouragement. She tells him that the kids like him because he is so full of potential and ideas, and after giving him the money, she asks that he show the kids how it's done. She continues by saying that without the rocket, they would just be an unhappy family. Charles completes his space training as a consequence, and they start to repair and modify the rocket, which results in the successful completion of the Dreamer rocket. No matter what happens to him, according to Charles, his kids will know that their father didn't stop. He could pass away happily, knowing that the FBI agents who were sick of pursuing him had given up. Locals find out that Charles is buying fuel again, and the entire police force gets there to stop him. While Charles is bidding his family goodbye, the officials stop a truck and ask the driver to step outside, only to find out that it's the family's helper. They continue driving to the farm, but before they could get there, the rocket is launched. Shepard is leading the mission. Everyone in the town, including the officials and authorities at the headquarters, watch the rocket with mixed feelings of disbelief and delight. As Charles is successfully launched into space, the shuttle orbits around the Earth. Charles cries tears of joy watching the beautiful scenery in front of him. Soon after, the lights go out, and he loses contact with his family, frightening. Meanwhile, the FAA denies the existence of any launch, and the family waits for him, hoping that he is alive. After a few days, Charles was able to reconnect with his family again, and unbeknownst to the outside world, he completes nine orbits around the Earth and safely lands back on Earth. Charles returns to Earth safely after nine orbits and a brief period of communication failure. The film concludes with Charles being renowned for his accomplishment. He is being interviewed on national television, and the FBI agents are still tailing him. He performs Elton John's Rocket Man on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. He is accorded a hero's welcome in still photographs that are displayed throughout the end credits.